I hate to say antichrist, but I mean, I would be basically if I'm identifying the God particle, okay? Because it's basically signifying there is no God, but there's only a particle. It's the Big Bang. It's the Higgs boson. It's a quantum evolved stellar star or a proto-nucleonic star. It only has every proton and neutron and electron in the universe in it, okay? Electrons do not interact with the strong force, therefore they stay soupy. Okay, they have this orbit. This is the, ethero the etherical orbit, which is mitochondrial DNA, and you have your nuclear, which is nuclear DNA. Okay, this mitochondrial ether is basically what holds everything together in the universe. Okay, this is the energy that it orbits. Okay, so you always get the same thing. There's a microcosm and a macrocosm. Okay, this is a microcosm, all right, but this thing becomes huge. This stellar star in relation to Earth is a point particle, and these point particles are actually many supernovas, and that energy literally exists in a micro universe. It's a microverse, okay? This microverse is just like our universe, except for it's on a very small fundamental, fundamental particle. Our fundamental physics and measurements do not apply. Once you have the Big Bang, the God Particle, spreading, expanding, exploding, it's sending lithium, hydrogen, and helium all over the universe, creating all the fundamental matter that we know. This is the fourth generation of matter. Basically everything we know. The periodic table, galaxies, stars, planets, moons. If you watch my other video that explains the theory of everything, that you understand how these quarks work and how these other questions that we don't understand work and how everything mechanically fits together in a quantum mechanical engine okay like i said about the microcosm and a macrocosm this earth and universe uh, this universe that we know it was born from plasma static plasma in the universe that static plasma is this electron debris or this covalent energy or this lepton energy this weak force that holds electrons together Okay, this weak force is basically what keeps orbits into place. See what I'm saying? This is fundamental gravity is born from the weak and strong force. Okay, this is why the fundamental gravity that we know has so many problems is because it is gravity that came from the strong and weak force. Okay, and the gravitons. It's actually micro fundamental particles. There's fractional. There's micro fractional integers that we can't apply. Okay, so now you have basically these different cosms. You have a cell, then you have, say, a solar system. All right, these are different cosms. They're the exact same thing, but on a different scale. Now, in the universe, basically, you have these point particles, or stars, or micronovas, okay, and all that little debris and all that micro energy literally forms quarks. All right, that's like a micro planet. A quark is like a micro planet, okay, and it ends up pulling debris in and creating a proton. All right. Remember, you always have the nuclear energy and the mitochondrial energy, which is basically how humans live. And this is exactly what a human looks like whenever they start their cellular divide. So this coincides with our bio-microverse also. Now you have to know that time is separate from space and matter. Okay, Space existed first, then matter existed, then time. Okay, We cannot time space there is no beginning and no end, therefore time cannot apply. It is an empty, static space. The only expansion we see is all the matter flying out. That's all we see is matter flying out. We don't see space itself. You cannot expand space. You know what I'm saying? You cannot have space. It's like you can't take space away from space. Okay, it's the Riemann paradox. You can't take infinity away from infinity. You're just going to end up with infinity. Therefore, space had to exist forever. Okay, now look at this. Where's the rest of it? All of this had to exist too, okay? All of it. This singularity had to exist, right? It only makes sense that this singularity is going to explode in all directions. Like every supernova, every micronova, everything that we see on micro scales and on macro scales, it, it all exists in a three-dimensional range. There's only one plane of existence. One plane of existence. Everything that we know that exists, whether it's ghosts, 
small energies, anything that we might think exists on an alternate plane of existence doesn't exist on an alternate plane of existence. It exists as its alternate frequencies and energies, but on this plane of existence. Therefore, it can relate to us. Okay? That's this plane of existence. Everything that can relate to us. Even if it's a micro scale, that micro scale can still, you know, apply to us. I mean, it's on our plane of existence. We can touch it. We know it's there. Now this is the problem with gravity. The strong force, 0.5. Weak force, 0.35. Electromagnetic force now is going to be a trade-off of 0.15. Alright, that's going to coincide with why basically we get 1g gravity. Alright, okay. Before fundamental gravity even starts, you have gravitons. Those are the weak interaction, the weak gravity that pulls the singularity together. Okay. Now this plasma that the Earth and universe, or that uh, the universe is without anything in it, this microcosm, this plasma is a microverse, and this is string theory. Okay. This exactly proves string theory. So once all of these add up, you get fundamental gravity. Dark energy explodes. This gravitons that grew and created fundamental gravity ends up getting shed as dark energy in the universe. So now gravitons are no more. They are the dark energy now. The repulsive force instead of the pulling in force. And now we only got 1g fundamental gravity. Okay, like I said with everything being nuclear and mitochondrial. Okay, nuclear DNA or this nuclear energy or a sun or a planet with something orbiting it. Regardless, it's all the same. It's all just a different cosm, okay? This is the micronuclear energy inside a cell. This is the etherical energy, okay? This energy gets dispersed all throughout the universe during the Big Bang or the Higgs bosons exploding, all right? This explosion. These black holes are that strong force that got tore apart, okay? So that's why we have black holes all over the universe, because it's that strong force, okay? We can't see it, okay? We, it's going to take electron telescope to be able to see it all right and this is the re the reason is is because light cannot pass into a nucleus we cannot we have to use an electron microscope to see that tiny okay so on a micro scale we would have to use electrons to see into a black hole because it's graviton energy it's this nuclear energy that we cannot see light particles are too big to pass through that's why light does not interact with a black hole because it's just too big and I'm talking about the light particles are too big to pass through this micro gravity here. This micro gravity or this strong force that held this nucleus into place of protons and neutrons in the God particle or the singularity or the quantum evolved star. Now this is the mitochondrial DNA. This is the static of the universe. This is where the plasma comes in. Okay. This is where loose electrons and Loose protons with neutrons are all soupy, plasma, in the universe, okay? The reason, this is a dark matter cloud, okay? This is dark matter. This is what dark matter is. It's the electrostatic in the universe, okay? We cannot see this with any of our electronic equipments because it's electronic, okay? It's blind. We're, we're totally blind to it when we use our electronic equipment. We're going to have to have alpha. We're going to have to use that nuclear energy to be able to see this, just like we're going to have to use the mitochondrial electron energy to see the nucleus inside a black hole. Okay? Because a black hole does have a nucleus. Whether you want to believe it or not, it does have a nucleus. Okay? It's a tiny point particle, basically, is what it is. But the point particle is in a lower state. It's not in a high energy flux anymore. It's in a now it's in a lower state like a planet would be compared to a sun or a quark would be compared to a, uh, the mini nova that created the quark material. Now, like I said, I'd hate to coincide myself with the Antichrist, but if I'm going to explain and identify the God particle, I guess that's what I am because I'm thinking that's why they suppress the whole idea. We start as plasma, then when you zoom out into the, mi the macrocosm, this is a microcosm. It starts out as plasma. Okay, this is the microverse. All right, it ends with plasma. All right, but it goes further. When we zoom out as far as we can, we get filaments in the in the universe. That's the plasma, but it's all made up of that microverse, which we are composed of. Okay, it's all fundamental matter to us. But when you zoom out way, way, way far, it's micro again. See what I'm saying? There's a microcosm. These cosms 
are what's important. If you don't understand these cosms, you can't understand how this works. But if you understand astrophysics and cosms and how they would react on the exact same way but on a tiny micro fundamental level, then you'll understand every bit of this. And you'll understand the God particle. You'll understand dark matter. You'll understand black holes. You'll understand the dark energy. You'll understand why we have everything in the universe that we have now. Einstein is wrong. And they did that on purpose. Only Tesla and Heisenberg truly knew that space had to exist first. Or you don't have a singularity. You void out that very concept of existence of a singularity if you have nothing for it to exist in in the first place. Now this makes more sense as a Big Bang. Okay? Empty static space, space the one plane of existence of static space existing literally forever. And then you have a singularity. Boom. It spreads out even. It's spreading out particles as we know it on this cosm all throughout the universe in a fairly even distribution. Here's another dumb depiction of the Big Bang, okay? You have a completely round explosion here. What's all this right here? This all has to be there. It all has to be there, okay? Heisenberg and Tesla knew this. All their research has led me to this. This is how I identified the God particle. Here's another depiction. See? Where's all this? Where's the rest? Where's the rest? This is the biggest cover-up, and it's blatantly obvious. It's right in front of us. This is the veil over our eyes. That there is a microverse. And we even see this in Hadron Colliders. This is not just a crazy theory that I have. This is all true. I have put literally every bit of this together. All my time and energy, all my research, everything. I have been obsessed with this for years, and I finally figured it all out. The Higgs boson is the quantum evolved proto-nuclear star that created the universe. Call me the Antichrist if you want. I don't care. But this is a fact. Everything that I've just said about physics and fundamental space and understanding these all coincide and all of the research proves it. All of the research proves it. Now all we need are the scientists to take this into consideration and start proving it with our instruments. This will give us a fundamental understanding of the universe and change everything that we know on a fundamental level.